to a channel discrimination protocol by the idea of this CZ isomorphism. Now there's uh, also in recent years, uh, there has been a lot, uh, lot of investigation on channel discrimination problem as well. But at the same time, the discrimination of quantum measurements is relatively new and I would say a bit less explored. But there are some nice results in these directions. And, but the problem is that most of the results in the existing literatures are either restricted to two-dimensional system or, have, or maybe they have been explored for multiple sort scenario. So here we are considering a general scenario where we are interested in the single sort measurement discrimination problem uh, for arbitrary d-dimensional quantum system. So this is just a brief background. Then I'll stay, I'll introduce the problem. So uh, consider that uh, uh, we are given with a uh, measurement device that can perform uh, one of the n uh, known measurements from the set Mx, where x is the x represent represents the measurement setting, and a denotes the outcome of the measurements. So in general, these measurements can be drawn from a probability distribution Px. Further, we assume that these measurements are acting on a d-dimensional Hilbert space. Uh, on a d-dimensional Hilbert space and that this uh, d may not be equals to the outcome of the measurements, may or may not be equals to the outcome of the measurements. Uh, now, uh, to distinguish the measurements, we send a known quantum state to the measurement device. Now, this measurement device performs one of the measurements from the set Mx on the state with a probability Px and gives an output A. Now, depending on that output, our task is to guess correctly which measurement has been performed. Now, to, to, to deal with this kind of problem, we introduce here two different approaches. One is with a single quantum system where the measurements uh, are performed on a single quantum system. The single quantum system could be entangled with another system, but we do not have access to it. And another scenario is a bipartite entangled system where we use the uh, entanglement of the state such that the particle undergoing this measurement is entangled with another system and we have a full access to that system. So, uh, so this is just a uh, basic schematic of a of a single sort measurement discrimination problem with single single systems. A known uh, a known state row uh, is sent to a measurement device. The device performs one of the measurements from the set Mx and uh, gives an output A. Now, depending on that output one can in principle choose some post-processing strategy such that, uh, such that the output of this uh, post-processing correctly guesses the input of Alice. So by, um, by yes. Can I yes. ask something? Yes, so yes sure. Do, uh, you, so I understand that you probe your measurements via quantum states that this box in the left prefers. Mm -hmm. So in principle, like you can probe uh, from round to round uh, using like uh, different states, uh, uh, right? Uh, and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I mean, can this post processing depend on the on the state that you decided? To? Yeah, I mean this uh, this this post processing will depend on the. It will uh, you need to decide on the. There will be a probability distribution which will depend on the input state. And depending on that, you design a post-processing strategy. Okay, okay, thanks. Yeah. So, so, the, so this classical post-processing is just uh, acts on this uh, probability distribution, P A M X rho, and 
uh, outputs uh, p bar z m x rho so where z the case is supposed to be equals to the input of x now uh, so in this scenario the uh, optimal single sort uh, distinguishing probability is uh, can be written in this way where we need to do uh, optimization over the state and uh, our uh, post processing strategy uh, now in the uh, in the second step uh, the quantity inside the sum is a convex uh, mixture of px trace rho max with weight q z a where q z is the weight from our uh, our strategy so we can always choose a optimal strategy such that this d is optimal and hence we can uh, we can finally uh, after doing a bit of calculation finally we can write this uh, in terms of this uh, uh, probabilities of the, the uh, outcome of the input state and the optimal probability will be just we need to maximize over the input state now uh, uh, as uh, this uh, this quantity inside the sum uh, is a convex function of the input state rho so it is enough to just to consider pure state for the optimal optimal probability for t and uh, uh, note that a value of d equals to 1 suggests that uh, this strategy perfectly discriminates the measurement okay so uh, so this is a schematic of the second scenario where we use uh, bipartite entangled systems so a known quantum bipartite state rho ap uh, is sent to two measurement devices held by alice and bob alice can perform uh, alice can perform a measurement uh, from the set mx and gives an out obtains an outcome a now depending on that outcome a bob selects a measurement from the set in y and obtains a outcome b such that b should be the uh, case of the input of alice so 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 the strategy of bob will depend on the outcome of alice now so so this scenario uh, this scenario can be expressed as a bell expression like this where this p a b x y is the joint probability distribution with some weight c now here the uh, the bobs measurement device uh, is like uh, the number of measurements bob will perform is exactly equal to the it should be equal to the number of outcomes of alice's measurement device and the outcome of bob's measurement device the number of outcome of bob's measurement device should be equal to the number of alice's input alice's uh, alice's measurement device as uh, number of input alice's measurement device has. so 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 you can see that uh, so 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 x and b should be 0 to n minus 1 in between and y and a should be in 0 to n minus 1 um uh, sorry uh, chandra i'm mm -hmm. a bit uh, confused uh, where y uh, sort of kicks in in this figure yeah. because i uh, so so fixing because that uh, this Al alice will have like uh, m in uh, m number of outcomes so yeah. depending on those outcomes bob will choose like m measurement settings so basically you choose y to be equal to a yes 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 right to be equal okay to so a i see i see so 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 okay so it's action okay so it's like the sum that's rolled with the additional condition that y equals to a yes yes okay and uh, such that we get b should be the guess should be equals to the input of x 
Okay, Thanks. so 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 this uh, in this Bell scenario, so we are interested exactly in this scenario where y equals to a and b equals to x. So then we can uh, write this uh, this uh, probability as uh, distinguishing probability as this, where c is equals to p x when y is equals to a, b equals to x, and zero in otherwise. Now, uh, so this optimal distinguishing probability in this scenario can be written in this form, where we need to do the optimization of our, of our the input state and the measurement settings of pop. Now, again, uh, this uh, B is achievable by a pure state, the same, uh, because of the same, uh, same reason as in the previous scenario and a value of b equals to one reflects that uh, this uh, entangled system perfectly discriminates the measurements. Okay, so uh, so now I'll say, I'll uh, prove that uh, this uh, measurement discrimination task in the second scenario uh, has some connection with steering. I'll start with this uh, first theorem. Given any set of measurements mx, b rho ab greater than d implies the shared state rho ab is steerable by pop. So I'll just briefly recall the local hidden state model. Uh, a state rho ab uh, can be, uh, a state rho ab is is uh, satisfying this uh, has a local hidden state model for any choice of measurements when this the joint probabilities can be written in this way where lambda represents some local hidden variable and this mu lambda sum up to one and the probability pb by lambda uh, uh, represents some arbitrary probability distribution that depends on the hidden variable lambda. And uh, without any loss of generality, we can assume that uh, that to be deterministic. And this trace rho lambda m a x uh, represents the probability of getting an outcome a when the when measurement x is performed on the hidden state rho lambda. Now, if if we if the joint probability distribution cannot be written in this way, then the state rho ab is steerable from Bob to Alice. Now, to uh, to prove this theorem, uh, we'll take that. Uh, the distinguishing probability in the second scenario, we should uh, maximize over those states which admit a local hidden state model. So, uh, so that's why we do this maximization over this uh, over this set of LHS. Uh, now, uh, doing a bit of calculation, and then finally you can show that. Uh, you can reach to the second line. And from there, this is, uh, uh, this PB is just a deterministic probability. So this should be, we can write, this should be as less than equals to this. And as you can see that this is equivalent to the single system measurement discrimination problem. And so, hence, it this B prime should be less than or equals to D. So that's uh, so that uh, uh, a steerable state uh, provides uh, an advantage in a measurement discrimination task. In principle, we can always uh, uh, for uh, for a measurement set M X, we can we can design uh, this. Uh, steering inequality, which is B less than equals to D. And the violation of this steering inequality suggests that, uh, that uh, the second scenario is advantageous than the single system one. Uh, 
Okay, so now uh, I will give some uh, criteria where uh, where uh, this uh, uh, second system is entangled or entanglement assisted scenario perfectly distinguishes the measurements, whereas the single system cannot. And uh, so I'll start with first uh, rank one projective measurements. So this theorem uh, states that a set of uh, D distinct rank one projective measurements in dimension D defined by the vectors V X A, where X A belongs to in from zero to D minus one is perfectly distinguishable in entanglement assisted scenario, but not perfectly distinguishable with single system. Whenever the vector satisfy these following conditions, like for all A, A prime, all X, X prime and A, they are orthogonal and there exist A, A prime such that the mod of this inner product between V, X, A and V, X prime, A prime should be less than one for all X and X prime. Um, now, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm just yeah. a bit confused about the first condition because the this first condition doesn't it just say that uh, that those are normal because because in the assumption of the theorem maybe I am confused with the notation you you have that those are like you have rank one projective measurements yeah so I understand that X labels the outcomes of no, X right. labels the measurement. Ah, X labels the measurement and A labels the outcome. The outcome. I see. Okay, okay. So it would be okay, that's why I'm confused by the first condition. So so the first condition so, so says that the for fixed outcomes, like I can like I like the for fixed outcome, like different measurements give let's say different measurements give different outcomes. Mm. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, different measurements cannot give the same outcome. Okay. Yes, yes, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay, so now I'll uh, I'll show how to prove this thing, uh, where we can show that uh, b is equals to one and d should be less than one. Now let's consider the maximally entangled state phi plus, and also consider the following measurement settings for Bob, where this is just the transpose of those projectors on, on Alice's side. Then uh, there's a uh, uh, distinguishability, distinguishable probability for phi plus is, can be expressed in this way and doing a bit of calculation, you can finally show that this we can write it in this way, like identity tensor product with this, uh, with this, with this operator. And this is nothing, to, nothing but just a identity because it forms a basis. And finally, you can write it as so like uh, <laughs> because here, like when you sum over x, it gives identity. So in the end, the x uh, labels the outcomes. Uh, the because I think it's uh... yeah 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 on on both side these are these are changed right because it's it's it would take the transpose of that uh, so. sure I I just mean that uh, we established uh, you know two minutes ago that a labels the outcome but now yeah. it seems that x labels the outcome or maybe I misunderstood uh, I mean for both it is other. For Alice, X represents the measurement, A represents the outcome. For Bob, it opposite, A labels the measurement. Right, X okay, the this is fun, I, I uh, get it but Look, also, you can see that in that expression that Chad and Rose, like it's symmetric, like you also have the sum, I understand, you have the sum over A, a you could- Sure, yes, sum. yes, of course, you can exchange the sums in case there is something wrong. And Fair enough. And also you have this, this first condition which kind of allows you to sleep. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I get it now. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, so we can show that, that uh, B is equals to one with a maximally entangled state. 
Now, on the other hand, the distinguishability for a single with a single system can be expressed in this way, where to to achieve d equals to one, we should have maximum of psi. This inner product should be equals to one for all a. Now, imagine there exists such a state such that this condition is satisfied for all A, then it is uh, not very difficult to check that for any pair A, A prime, such that A not equals to A prime, there exist X and X prime such that we can write this uh, input state psi as P A X and P A prime X prime, both are equal to this psi. And that will contradict the, the, the second condition here. So this way uh, we can show that uh, D should be less than equals to one because uh, all these maximum are not equal to one. Okay, so, uh, so this is the, this is the proof for the rank one projective measurements and these are the criteria we should have for a rank one projective measurement so that we can have uh, advantage in an entanglement assisted scenario. I'll just uh, give an example. So one can verify that for n equals to t equals to two and three, there are no, project, no projective measurements satisfying the conditions given here and the first non-trivial example can be constructed for n equals to d equals to four. So this is this example in dimension four where I have listed all the vectors and these vectors satisfy the conditions given in, the, given in theorem one. Now, uh, as this table satisfy the conditions given in, given in the theorem one, we should have p equals to one and t should be less than equals to one. Uh, less than one, sorry, not equal, less than one. So numerically we find that d is uh, uh, 0 0.78. So we have uh, quite an advantage with, with a maximally entangled state. So how did you construct those vectors? like you did it on uh, paper? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if Remik is here, he can say something. <laughs> I see, okay, sure. Yeah, Remik is a master of such tricks, probably. Yeah, yeah. Right. So <laughs> he can say how did he do that. Yeah, I guess uh, he did some nice way. He had some nice idea to do that. Yeah, I, I can uh, say something about yeah, this. Sure. Yeah, so uh, for given X, uh, the four outcomes, uh, should, the, the state corresponds to the four outcomes should be orthogonal, right? So first we can choose that uh, the first basis is the computational basis, right? Uh, now uh, we should have the condition that uh, given a uh, for two different x uh, uh, can you go back to the previous slide yeah sure uh, yeah so uh, for all x and x prime uh, the vectors for uh, given outcome the vector should be orthogonal now can you come back so uh, the uh, the uh, second row and on the first column, this entry should be orthogonal to the uh, first row first column from that condition, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, similarly, the column uh, should also form an ortho orthogonal basis, okay? Mm -hmm. So one thing is, uh, yeah, so, so now, uh, yeah, so this is, and if, every column is ortho orthogonal basis, then the first condition is satisfied, right? Uh, okay, and then we have to satisfy the last condition, the second condition, which is, uh, which is, can you go back to the previous slide? 
yeah so uh, like uh, there exists like two different outcome uh, such that the inner product is less than one right for two different x and we have so yeah so and can uh, can you forward mm -hmm. again and then you can see that the, that condition is also satisfied here because uh, for two different outcomes um, for example here in, uh, for example uh, third row first column and third row second column uh, there are there are some overlap mm -hmm. right? so so something like this so we have to like so it's a d cross d table and such that each row is an orthonormal basis and each column is an orthonormal basis uh, with the additional condition that is the number two, uh, the second condition. And if you try to fill this uh, table, then you can, uh, first you can, note, you, can, uh, you can notice that you cannot fill this uh, such table for dimension two and three. Uh, mm -hmm. And only from dimension four, you can uh, construct such table. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's fun. It sounds like fun uh, work, <laughs> right? I'm. I'm also. It's. It's curious that for two and three, okay, there. There seems to be something funny going on with the structure of projective measurement, uh, starting dimension four, right? Because this this other problem. Okay, sorry that I bump in, but like it's supposed to be informal, and I care about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there is this this uh, this problem of uh, projective simulability that uh, like what measurements can be simulated via projective measurement, and we know how to solve that problem for dimensions up to three, like via some SDP. Uh, while for higher dimensions, uh, we don't have such an SDP, and maybe it's okay. Maybe it's just coincidence. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, okay. Um, can I have uh, just one more question? So you, you, your first theorem was about like uh, that if there is such an advantage, like that you can use such measurement discrimination gains as witnesses for steering, right? Uh, yeah. But is uh, uh, is there a converse? That is to say, if I have a state that doesn't have this. Uh, uh, this, that is not uh, that is uh, not answer that uh, sorry because I'm confused because like that is unsteerable right uh, mm -hmm. that is uns uh, unsteerable uh, can you construct a measurement discrimination gain for which it would exhibit an advantage uh, to an unsteerable state so I'm confused by the because I'm uh, I'm I'm confused uh, what is quantum in the case of steering because I don't work with steering. So I mean, there is this, what, like there is this business of connecting discrimination games with resources, right? Yeah. Uh, and here having uh, what, like if you, if a state, like here, the st if the state is uh, unsteerable, that means that it exhibits a quantum property, right? Uh, like, yes. is that yes. the way one should? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I? I mean, so, so, you show that you can, like, given any measurement discrimination game, uh, you can define, uh, you can, if, uh, let's say, if there is an advantage of using entangled state, right? Uh, uh, wait, it's okay, so it's the other way. Okay, so, so, yeah, so, I, so I, this, this is the, just a necessary thing, not the, not the sufficiency one, if you are asking. Sure. That. So, exactly. So, is it, uh, all, uh, so, can you, but do you know for sure that it would be actually nice if there was like, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, so the, it would be actually nice ways. if we can show both ways, that would be yeah. really nice. Yeah, so that we kept it as like a future questions because right now we don't know how to uh, how to show the uh, sufficiency proof mm -hmm. i see i see cool yeah so i'll explain that in the in in conclusion and future directions
so this is right now just a uh, just a uh, not a not a sufficiency criteria just a necessary criteria thanks okay so so now moving over to this uh, povms now uh, this theorem uh, states that uh, given any set of orthonormal vectors pi such that for at least one pair kl uh, that satisfy this condition for all i and j then there exists a set of deep ovms each having the square outcomes that are perfectly distinguishable in entanglement assisted scenario but not perfectly distinguishable in the single system scenario so there here this uh, this unitary matrices can be uh, constructed by this uh, by this x k and j del where j and x are in some sense uh, uh, generalization of uh, two qubit uh, pauli uh, Pauli matrix sigma j and sigma x, and this omega is uh, i root. Uh, uh, this omega is the dth root of unity. Now let's consider uh, the following measurements, which you can construct from this basis and these uh, unitary operators. Uh, so, so, so there are uh, like. Uh, uh, so there are like uh, D measurements, which we can construct. Now for, and also consider the measurements on Bob side, which are like uh, taking, taking the uh, transpose of, of, the, of this, uh, of MX, uh, of MXKL. Now, uh, uh, one can easily check that this uh, the measurement on Bob site uh, uh, form a projective measurement is a valid uh, projective measurement, and with those, if you find out the optimal probability in entanglement assisted scenario, you can again show that it is equals to one. But on the other hand, if we check the um, uh, and uh, this. Uh, probability for uh, with a single system then you can write it as in this way and where this maximum of our psi ukl vx this quantity should be equals to one for all pair of kl then we will have d equals to one otherwise d is always less than one now consider that they are now consider that first we choose u zero zero which is identity then to satisfy this uh, this condition the size should be equals to d x prime for for some value of x time then this uh, in this uh, for identity this condition is not satisfied then there should exist at least one pair of KL which satisfies the condition in the theorem. And for that pair, with this, this maxima is always less than one. And uh, in this way, we can show that D is always less than one. So for so so for in so in this situation also we have a advantage with an entangled state but not with a single single system. So now here uh, we'll give a proof that uh, such Vx can exist in all dimension, uh, in all dimension. Like, so, so I'll state this proposition that uh, the eigenvectors of any unitary V satisfy the condition given in the previous theorem Whenever this V and UKL, they do not share any common eigenvector for all KL except for KL equals to zero. Now to prove this proposition, I'll start with a con we will prove this theorem by a contradiction. We'll say that uh, this consider 
first consider this vi are the eigenvectors of the unitary v then the negation of this condition implies that there exist uh, exist uh, one vi for all kl such that we have this so so this will contradict this uh, this uh, mm, this condition now you can see that uh, there are d square uh, d square now d square minus 1 numbers of ukl for which this above equation should hold and the unitary v has at most d distinct eigen vectors so that suggests that we can choose two distinct eigen vectors from d into d minus 1 over 2 possibilities so to satisfy the above condition for i not equals to j there should exist at least two different operators at least like xk j del and xk prime j del prime such that for the same pair of i and j we have xk j del vi equals to e to the power i some phase vj and xk prime j del prime we have another phase with the same vector vj now uh, taking conjugate transpose of the second and multiplying with first uh, we can show that uh, we get something like one so so you can see we we are arriving at a contradiction we start with a negation of this theorem uh, and we arrive at the contradiction that uh, this vector vi is an eigenvector of uk uh, so that uh, completes the proof of this proposition now one can check that uh, there are lots of examples of such unitaries uh, possible in in d dimension i just uh, outline here one such example which is uh, studied in this uh, in this literature so next uh, moving into another example where also that uh, we can construct such POVMs in d equals to 2 to the power r or dimension d equals to 2 to the power r. Consider uh, the following states uh, v0 and v1 where beta is in between 0 uh, from 0 to it can be in between 0 and pi by 4 and this v0 and v1 form a basis in uh, two dimensional hilbert space and subsequently by taking tensor products of v0 and v1 we can create a basis in d dimensional hilbert space in this way now it is easy to see that this u01 which is z we can decompose this as a two cross two unitary matrices where this vi is just a, we can represent it as a, it's a diagonal matrix. And for all k, you can, we can easily check that this, uh, this uh, inner product of uh, vk, inner product between the sandwich between vi and vj for this v0 and v1, these are all less than equals, less than one for ij equals to this zero and one. Hence, using this and using this uh, uh, this decomposition, we can check that this uh, the inner the sand sandwich of J in, in between B will be less than one. And as this quantity is less than one, D is less than one. And we can show similar similar results can be shown for the powers of J. We just need to decompose it again in power subject and that will further reduce the value of t. So this is just one another example. Okay, now, uh, now in the previous scenario, uh, the Bob's uh, needs to perform the square number of measurements, which uh, increases polynomially with d 
but uh, so we can construct another situation where Bob needs to perform D plus one measurements. So here it is the theorem. Uh, given any set of orthogonal vectors PI that satisfy the following conditions, then there exists a set of D POVMs, each having D plus one outcomes that are perfectly distinguishable in entanglement assisted scenario, but not perfectly distinguishable within, within single system. So from here, we can construct the POVM elements in this way, where these vectors uh, for A equals to zero to D minus one can be written in this way, where Z is uh, already defined in the previous theorem, and U is just a unitary, which can take, a, which take the state from a computational basis to this basis, this orthogonal set of basis. Now consider the measurements on Bob's side, which is like a transpose of these vectors, which you can easily check that it's a it's a it's a valid projective measurement. And using similar techniques as before, we can easily check that B is equals to one. Now on the other hand, uh, the distinguishable probability with single system is equals to this, where to achieve d equals to one, this maximum and this maximum should be equals to one for any value of a. Now, see, note that if we choose a equals to zero, then this is identity, and we should choose psi equals to vx. Then if we choose psi equals to vx, then this condition cannot be one due to the conditions stated in the theorem. Hence, uh, D uh, should be less than one. So again, we can show that uh, entanglement assisted scenario uh, perfectly discriminates the measurements, uh, uh, whereas the single system cannot. So I'll just uh, give some examples in D equals to two. The, in D equals to two, you choose the orthogonal vectors in this way, and you can check that the optimal probability is five over five by six, and B should be ones as they are satisfying those conditions. For D equal to three, you can consider this orthogonal vectors where this sum inside the gate is module of three sum, and Numerically, we find that D is 0.698 and P should be one as the vectors satisfy the condition in the theorem. And another example for D equals to four, these are, uh, these are the vectors which satisfy the conditions in the previous theorem. So D is numerically D is 0 0.706 and V is one. So this is just a few examples in D equals to two, three and four. Now we'll elaborate on this example in the next next uh, slide. So now uh, we have shown that uh, um, uh, every uh, that uh, if we have an advantage in a measurement discrimination start, then the state is TRD. Now here, as all pure two qubit entangled state are pure two qubit entangled state are steerable, we can we can state this theorem that for any two qubit pure entangled state phi, there exists a set of two three outcome POVMs such that P phi is greater than T. So consider the measurement operators, which are like uh, consist of this PI and PI, uh, PI tilde, where PI tilde is uh, J acting on PI and PI are these these objectors p0 and p1 so as you can see that all these measurements are in this edge state plane then we can take the state as in this way and doing the uh, doing a bit of calculation we can show that uh, d should be equals to 5 over 6 
this this is the optimal value achievable with a single system now we know that the, this result that for any pure two qubit entangled state phi there exist two local unitary operations ua and ub such that if we act this ua and ub locally on phi then we have a canonical we can write this state as in in the canonical form which is like sin alpha 0 0 and cos alpha 1 1 now on top of that consider uh, consider uh, three projective measurement on bob site which can be expressed in this way this is just a general pauli pauli measurement now for this state phi prime we can show that if we maximize over the measurement settings of bob we can achieve something like this 1 over 6 4 plus 1 over uh, square root of 1 plus 3 c square where c is sine 2 alpha is the concurrence of the state emitter of entanglement hence you can see that as soon as c greater than 0 or the state is entangled b is greater than 5 by 6. Now we saw this uh, for pi prime but if we take this state phi and if we rotate this measurement mx and in y by this local unit trace, then we will achieve the same value as b phi, b phi prime. And hence, uh, this completes the proof that any two qubit pure entangled state phi, there exists a set of two, three outcome purians uh, such that b phi is greater than greater than t. So. Uh, yeah, so as I said that in the first theorem, we saw that uh, if we have an advantage in entanglement assisted scenario, then the state is uh, steerable. Uh, on, the, on the similar line here, as all pure two qubit entangled state are steerable, we saw, uh, we proved this theorem that any pure two qubit entangled state uh, is advantageous in a measurement discrimination task over a single system. Okay, so now I'll just conclude. So here we study uh, a general scenario with a single sort measurement discrimination problem for arbitrary d-dimensional systems. We introduce two different, uh, two different strategies to deal with the problem. One is with single system and another one with bipartite entangled system. Then we provide, uh, provide some criteria to check whether a set of measurements can be perfectly discriminated with the help of maximally entangled state. Furthermore, we saw that uh, the advantage in the entanglement assisted scenario is a weakness of steering. Along the same direction, we proved that any two covert entangled state gives advantage in a measurement distinguishability task. So now I'll state, I'll get back to this uh, initial discussion about this, uh, uh, about this uh, uh, sufficiency criteria. So recently there are some uh, work by Piani and Watros. They showed that every entangled state is useful uh, in a in a channel discrimination protocol and every steerable state is also uh, useful in a sub channel discrimination protocol so along the same line we saw that every uh, we saw that uh, if a, if a, if we have an advantage in a in a measurement distinguishability task with a with a bipartite entangled state then the state is steerable. Now, as measurement is uh, can be reckoned as a subclass of channel discrimination, subclass of a channel discrimination protocol. Uh, so it may be possible we can show also the sufficiency that is <coughs> for every steerable state, rho AB by Bob, there exists a set of quantum measurements such that rho a b is greater than t so i guess uh, this is what mia was asking right 
Yes, exactly. I was just confused about the names with theory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, we can we can it may be possible. So if we can show that, that would be a really interesting thing. Okay. So if if we if this is not the case. Then can we so that for all pure bipartite entangled states provide advantage in a measurement discrimination protocol, like we saw it for uh, two qubit bipartite entangled states. Also, it would be really interesting if we can find a basis or measurements in any general D such that the advantage is unbounded or precisely that uh, D by D increases with the dimension. Also, one may look for some set of measurements for which uh, the optimal probability is achieved by non-maximally entangled state. And of course, it would be great if we can generalize the protocol for without labeling our outcomes, if we can do it unambiguously. Okay, and thank you. Thank you for the case. Uh, thank you, Chara, for a very nice talk. Uh, right, we have time now for questions, comments to the speakers. Okay, so I, I start. So let's say you focus on this advantage of entanglement or like steerable states uh, for the discrimination of measurements. But what about the converse question? Because, you know, in those near term quantum devices, you may not be interested in using uh, that much entanglement. So, uh, so for, like, do you have any other, like, any intuitive understanding, like, for what classes of measurements this, uh, like, entanglement won't help that that much? You know. Okay, so you're asking that uh, how to know like, that which set of measurements that are that entanglement won't help. Yes, or it, it won't be helping much. That is to say, for which measurements we can get around without adding extra systems. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, right now I have no intuition how to, what kind of measurements. Or maybe do you have like an ex, uh, okay, this is maybe, uh, yeah, because you, you, you did beautiful work, like analytical and with lots of examples. Maybe you gave that and they missed it. So like some, you focus on examples when there was an advantage, as far as I remember. Like, was there an example, maybe I missed it, when there was no advantage? Mm, no advantage, but I saw that all the examples. Maybe, you, did, the... maybe you had it uh, and they missed it, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think everything was with advantage here, right? Yeah, yeah. I also didn't see any. Well, you know, they uh, evidently focused on the advantage. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm probably in the projective on two and three case we can design. There is no mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah. So for three and two, like everything is like that, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so the example I presented here all are like advantage in, in with a, with So, entire. because here, like when you can construct this non-trivial example with uh, d equal four, mm -hmm. but is this right. like uh, the construction, you know, because Deba like elaborated how to construct this, but is this mm -hmm. like, you know, you can, uh, do you have some other constructions or like, or maybe like how many, uh, let's say equivalently advantageous measurements can be constructed in this way or stuff like this. Like, is it very, uh, is this a lot of measurements or not maybe this? Because this is just an example, right? And Yeah, this is just an example. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the question would be like, how, uh, how can we think about this? Like whether it is a big set which provides this advantage. Uh, I see, I see the question. And maybe, okay, like when you, maybe, like you guys played maybe with a bunch of examples numerically, just mm -hmm. like uh, like were you observing like a 
let's say large advantage uh, for uh, like of using this entanglement compared mm -hmm. to like for the example studies or was it just numerically was it like bounded typically like you know mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't get your question properly. So this advanced, like, because you, you had success probabilities of like this yes. measurement, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and you are comparing entanglement assisted case with mm -hmm. no entanglement. Case. Yes. And so you had two numbers. Uh, mm -hmm. Like in one case, probably you focus on an ambiguous. Okay, so the ratio of those two numbers was it like yes. for some numerical examples? Was it sometimes? Mm -hmm quite large, like, or was it typically bounded as the dimensions were like? The... Yeah, means uh, for some examples we studied, like for two, three, and four, this advantage is uh, getting bigger, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, we, we cannot construct a, a measurement for any uh, any dimension d, such that this uh, advantage is unbounded. I see. I see. But we have we did some uh, numerical calculation with maybe up to five or something, mm -hmm. and we see that the uh, advantage is increasing. Okay. Cool. Okay. Any other uh, question? Okay. One question from uh, from me. Uh, what about, let's say, noisy measurement? Because uh, you focused on somehow uh, pure or extremal measurement, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or discrimination of them. So how this, this picture, uh, di did you play with, with noisy measurements? You know, because like in, let me say, because I want to explain maybe a bit like where I come from with my questions. So. Like uh, there is like this big business of certification of quantum devices now, mm -hmm. and you can, you know, in particular measurements that occur on them are, are noisy, and then it's like natural to, like, uh, yeah, to do discrimination not be like between the measurement and somehow it's noisy version, uh, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we'll see, I see. Be, like as small resources as possible. So. Yeah, questions did you study the like noisy measurement? No, no, we haven't. Uh, cool. studied no, no, just uh, right. Yeah, but that would be yeah, one nice thing to study. Right. Okay, uh, very nice work, but still, uh, last chance to ask something to turn down. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It would be cool if you if you had this this one to one connection of steering. Yeah, yeah, that would be really nice. Better if we can connect it somehow. Or like, okay, if there is such a connection, then there might be, of course, with those robustness measure, like with some. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah, might be possible. Okay. Good luck. With with that, thanks a lot again for joining us and hopefully next time we see each other in person, Chandan.